DC Trees. I built a tree board and a big giant maple with a bench inside and a big wide side table. I broke out to hide in some lush little pine, smelt the western red cedar close by. Started trembling like an aspen and grasping, wishing I was back in class, now missing in action. But being a Buddhist, I was drawn to the Arbutus. Hope had me smoke way up in a giant oak. Yo. I broke out and bought some goods, came back and lay back against the black cottonwood. Yo. It seems like this whole life be a search. I hope mine's prettier than a freestand of white birch. Weeping like willows while I'm sleeping on pillows. Y'all are big fish, I'm just a minnow. Climbing up the mountain pass to find a mountain ash. The fountain's fast, watch out, man. But get wet socks, I best not. I'm trying to live and knock a chop down like a hemlock. I'm on a walk through the forest, got more to learn. I protect these trees with a sword fern. And with the pine beetle, you gotta show concern. I've done what I can. Just outside of Vancouver, stretching north from Burrard Inlet, is one of the lower mainland's lesser-known treasures. Indian Arm stretches almost 30 kilometers and is North America's most southerly glacially formed fjord. Since 1998, the Tsleil-Waututh Nation and the province of British Columbia have been working together to formulate a plan that will protect the environmental, recreational, and cultural assets of the area through the implementation of the Senukiam Indian Arm Provincial Park. This plan was released on the 14th of February 2010. This is the story of my connection to the park, some of the aspects of the agreement, and why collaborative approaches to land management can not only be effective, they are oftentimes necessary. I have lived in Deep Cove, a community at the southern end of Indian Arm my entire life, and have worked in the kayak industry for the last five years. It is through kayaking that I attach a lot of meaning to Indian Arm. Kayaking is unique in that it allows you to explore otherwise inaccessible areas with minimal impact on your surrounding environment. You are free to explore every nook and cranny, and because you are traveling at not much faster than the speed of walking, you are able to fully take in and appreciate your surroundings. Through my involvement in kayaking, I have come to view Indian Arm as both an environmental and recreational resource. While it is definitely both of these things, it is a very important cultural resource as well. Indian Arm is extremely rich in environmental resources. The forests support a vast array of flora and fauna, including Douglas fir, hemlock, cedar, and are home to deer, black bear, cougars, mountain goats, and recently elk have been reintroduced to the area. The waters are also very rich, supporting over 50 species of fish and shellfish, including six species of salmon. This area has always been of utmost importance to the Tsleil-Waututh, which means people of the inlet, who have called this area home since time out of mind. The rich natural bounty provided enough resources to sustain the Tsleil-Waututh and other First Nations. There is a Tsleil-Waututh saying that goes, when the tide went out, the table was set. In 1995, the provincial government announced its intention to protect the lands of Upper Indian Arm through the creation of a provincial park. Even though the Tsleil-Waututh had been negotiating a treaty involving the area since 1994, they were not consulted in the creation of the park. While this park initially grew out of conflict, it eventually evolved into a collaborative process based on mutual understanding and respect. The Park Management Board is based on equal representation from the provincial government and the Tsleil-Waututh Nation. During the planning process, the Tsleil-Waututh also made sure to consult other First Nations who traditionally use the area. It is important to note that the Tsleil-Waututh don't see the park as a place to be managed, but as a place to be restored to its original bounty. The planning process for this park involved the creation of the Bioregional Inventory Atlas, a document containing over 30 maps showing everything from topography to plant species to archaeological site. A lot of this information was gathered through interviews with Tsleil-Waututh elders who shared their knowledge about traditional land uses within the park. If it were not for this collaboration, many of the areas of cultural significance to the Tsleil-Waututh would not be adequately protected. The plan also calls for the protection and celebration of the richness of Tsleil-Waututh connections to Sinequium in the past and the present. Part of this involves the creation of a model Tsleil-Waututh village at the site of Granite Falls. This will not only be an educational experience, bringing the possibility to share Tsleil-Waututh culture with the general public, it will also tap into the rapidly growing Aboriginal tourism sector. 
Collaborative approaches to park planning and management are important for several reasons. Involving First Nations in the planning process allows for knowledge about culturally significant places to be brought out. This allows for these places to not only be protected, but also celebrated. This insight would be lost if park planning was done solely by the province. Because the Tsleil-Waututh were not only involved in the planning of the park, but also in its operation, much more effective stewardship is now possible. And finally, park management agreements such as this make the park a more enjoyable place for all. Our park should no longer be viewed simply as environmental and recreational resources, but as cultural resources as well. Through researching for this project, the way I look at Indian Arm has changed. It's changed the way I think about how places were used and how people still think about them. But most importantly, it has shown the possibility for greater and more effective land management into the future. Hopefully what has been accomplished in Indian Arm will soon become common practice throughout the province. I'll be that mind traveler in the house, pipe down and innocent. Recall the last visit, yes, it's been a minute, kid. I still possess the wicked, and as far as it goes, next time we show, best to buy a ticket. I got my mind free, feeling the most incredible thoughts. Getting loose, feel the groove, hope it never will stop. Capture the moment, feeling sweet emotion. Swimming the summertime, feeling the ocean, music vibing. Can't believe where I'm residing I'm out of reach on this beach On the tropical islands Oh yes, that's mad Not your typical cat I'm knee deep in the garden While I'm writing this rap I'm living limitless Witness this vision that's ridiculous Observe what occurs Don't be concerned with the frivolous I dribble this and make my moves Freestyling in Thailand Till I find my groove Now I'm finding clues This is what happens what? When you get inside Just watch the action when we get inside, we're gonna reset the time and just get the vibe. So best decide if you're alive when you step with inside. Cause uh, and every time that I get inside, I can control everything that I've known. And every time that I get inside, I gotta go.